most complex. Pad kid poured curd pulled cold. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is the Fleeting Thoughts podcast. I am Joe. I am Channing. There's Channing. Hello. Hello, everybody. And uh, welcome to another episode where we uh, chat about words, culture, society, movies, and uh, other bullshit. The world as a whole. Just whatever comes to our brain. Just two guys in the world at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. We can do whatever we want. Fleeting out of our mouths. With no editing whatsoever. I call it raw doggin. Raw doggin. Which is usually a sexual term. (laughs) It almost always (laughs) is until you don't use it that way. Well, I don't like to use it that way. I like to... It's my... People are like, what's your podcast style? I raw dog it. Oh, yeah. For sure. We raw dog your uh, ears with our... (laughs) Stylish listenings. What? Our stylish <laughs> listenings? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was really entranced and then you lost me at the very yep. end. I uh, I uh, didn't know where to go with that. Um, how are you doing, Channing? I'm well. Just recorded another Cornwall Literature podcast, which is our uh, new one we just started, what, last week? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just on a whim, sort of. Um, which that was yeah, fun. Yeah, kind of well. a whim. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that went well. That'll be going live here shortly. And then uh, before that, it was just a normal day. Yeah, for sure. Pretty normal, pretty easy going day. Uh, I have the day off tomorrow, so I was always uh, I'm in a lucky, pretty duck. decent mood today. <laughs> I know it was. I'm so special. Um, but yeah, we did a, a recording for um, the new podcast, and uh, this one we did was called uh, "Delicate Creature." Creature, delicate creature. And the one before that was called "Are You Going to Heaven." Mm -hmm. And it's from your uh, compilation of short stories. And the compilation is entitled Wolves. Wolves. Because there are wolves among us. Mm -hmm. And we are the sheep to be slaughtered. Don't be a sheep. Um, And uh, if anybody wants to go check that out, we already have the first episode up. Mm -hmm. And the new episode will come up soon. And we'll probably be up by the time this one's up, I think. Yeah, probably will be. And um, they can go to um, the Facebook page. What is that called? Uh, it's just facebook.com slash Cornwall Literature. Cornwall Literature. Mm-hmm. And then we also have a Libsyn page for it, yep. which is just uh, Cornwall Literature um, uh, slash Libsyn.com, I think, is what they do that. Probably. Or it might be... I think it might be... Or it's Libsyn.com slash Cornwall Literature. Or dot com slash Libsyn. Just, just search Google for it. it. Just, just, just fucking Google just it. Just fucking Google it. Or, or just go to Facebook like everyone else and just find the page yeah. and... Um, or link. Twitter, I put a link to it uh, oh, on yeah. my Twitter, well, which Peter. is, uh, I was thinking you should start your own Twitter for just Cornwall literature. Oh and yeah, you I guess could, I could. You could promote it and you could, um, uh, like do little snippets from your, like just one sentence, you know, from mm-hmm. each little thing that we do. I'll just pick the most volatile yeah. sentence that I can find and then just, that's yeah. the teaser. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Um, and then you can also get it on iTunes. Just search for Cornwall Literature. It's up there. And you can subscribe and share and link and and uh, uh, comment and rate and rape and touch. And I think that has successfully been plugged now, officially. Plugged. <laughs> butt plugged. <laughs> uh, Got to get those butt plugs out. Um, for sure. I'm excited. It's really fun. I, yeah, honestly, no, I've, I've been enjoying it, too. It's uh, it's exciting because uh, you know I get to listen to your uh, uh, works, and then it's theatrical because we're reading it out mm-hmm. loud, and um, it's fun. I'm I I like it. So well, everyone glad. everyone should check it out. All fifteen of you, Fleeter Nation, go check it out. Fleeter Nation, the Fleeter Nation. Oh, we need to become famous just because of that. Just for that one thing. Just. Just so that we so can, we can use that. Nation. Well, we've already started it. It's yeah. you know everything's got to build up, and if everybody you know shares this with one person, then we'll have thirty people listening. <laughs> 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 oh man, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you, everybody. <laughs> We're doing this anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is too much fun to stop. And we just so. lost two listeners because well, fuck me and fuck <laughs> yeah. you. I'm not fuck fucking you. listening to this anymore. Fuck you, Joe. I know you, man. Why you gotta be like that? I'm going to write you so many nasty comments on Twitter. Dude, I would appreciate any of that. Oh, really? I don't, I've never gotten anything from anybody mm-hmm. and I, other than a little bit here and there. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, cool. Let's do, uh, Let's get into these words. What is yeah. our... Uh, what's our... What word? Word? Word up. The word. Bird is the word. What's your word? Uh, my word this week <laughs> is Evanes. 
not like the band Evanescence, which was popular in like what two thousand five mm-hmm. or something. Anyway, nope, just Evanes, um, which means to disappear gradually, vanish, or fade away. Yeah, super cool. I yeah. like it. I uh, I feel like that's a useful a useful word in uh, you know literature most likely. I yeah, I don't think I've really seen it used that much. I think I, I think I have seen it before in something that I read, mm-hmm. um, but not particularly common mm-hmm. term. But yeah, it's pretty easy to even slip into sentences because instead of saying "Oh, she disappeared," you'd be like "She evanesced." Dumb. Yeah, or her um her her memory um. The memory of her evanesced with the uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or with time, her memory began to evanesce. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. That's why I write uh, stories. Nice. Hello, sentence structure. <laughs> right on. Um, cool. Well, mine is actually two words, and they're not even English, technically. Oh, uh, I the rules now. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Um... I thought the uh, I would uh, bring to the table um, modus operandi. Ooh, modus that one I have heard. Operandi. I, other people probably have heard it as well. It's a Latin phrase that means uh, method of operation, um, and uh, it's often referred to as MO. Like, what was the serial killer? Yeah, I was going to say. I think it's used in like police. <laughs> Yeah, a, a, a lot of times for sure. Crime investigation. Um, and, uh, you know, people use it a lot. And uh, I never really understood what it meant. Not, I mean, I didn't just learn what it meant just now, but like a while back, I learned that it, um, I always thought it meant motive. Like, what was the serial killer's motive? Like, why were they doing it? But it isn't. It's what did they do? What, mm-hmm. did, you know, what was their procedure? What did they, you know, did they stalk them first? Did they do rituals? You know, and that's all something that, uh, uh, the investigators always try to figure out. Yeah. And I think it sounds cool. Modus it does. Operandi. Most Latin phrases are cool as fuck sounding, at least. But in typical American fashion, we just turn it into an acronym because it's... Yeah, it's too difficult. God, who wants to just say that all the time when you can just say, what's his MO? Yeah. Well, it's efficient to do that, if you know what it means. <laughs> I wonder how many... Uh, I wonder if there's anybody who got into the... Uh, like criminal justice field that just didn't really know. They were just like, "Mo was that just short for motive?" And then <laughs> the, this <laughs> went through the, that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know thought. if they teach that directly. I don't know. It's just like an unwritten thing that you should just know about when you go into the field. They're like, "Mo, you don't know what that means?" <laughs> yeah. Come hey, on, that's on a broad. Come on, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guy. We're investigating some stuff here, guy. Um. Anyway, I wanted to uh, mention real quick at the top of the the show, I said pad kid, poured curd, pulled cold. And uh, Channing is the one who introduced me to that little uh, tongue twister. Yeah. What is that? It's the most complex tongue twister as discovered by, um, shoot, it was a university. They were doing this. Yeah, it was like a linguistics um, professor and his students discovered it. Hmm. Um, I just thought it was interesting because it's, such a nonsensical sentence like when you look at it when you when you just are looking at the words and reading it you're like oh okay that makes sense but when you say it out loud it just sounds like nonsense it's like random yeah it's not words real. thrown together not a real sentence with there's any not structure. really in any instance that you would use that sentence naturally no and a lot of tongue twisters are at least uh coherent yeah. in nature but this was one that i guess they came up with that no one could do 10 times mm-hmm. in succession as fast as possible without you know just totally butchering it uh and since we uh talk about words i thought that would be fun to say yeah. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I I just totally. throw so many thanks out there. I feel like I should thank you. It's like uh, natural. Mm-hmm. It is natural. Uh, to thank me is the most natural thing someone can do. I am so yeah, helpful. I could see, yeah, I just look at your face and I just mm-hmm. want to thank whatever thank like occurred to make your presence a reality. I don't know, man. Physics and sex. Uh, sex. Yep. Um, talking about sex, let's talk about um, the new craze. It's called having a fucking beard. <laughs> um, this seems to be a pretty popular thing nowadays, and I think uh, in the last five years, it's kind of took off in popular culture. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a beard, beard, as a, a wearer beard wearer, beards. um, I uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I never did it. Uh, I've been wearing a beard for most of my life since I could grow one in uh, 
you know, late middle school when I started growing facial hair as a youngster. Um, Did, were you I, able to grow it really thickly in middle school? Not or was it thickly, very, okay. no, thickly. Um, I'm very was thickly. It real thick. Um, no, but I had like a mustache in eighth grade that I started shaving, and then like a good one, like one you could tell. Uh, I look like a little Spaniard, probably. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, with their little mustaches. Ooh. And I then, always uh, like the. Uh, in the history books, they would have like pictures of like the, like King Henry and shit when they were young, and they had these like little faggy mustaches <laughs> where they couldn't. It was just like little puby hairs. Yeah, well, I think there are different styles. Fashion <laughs> with uh, facial hair is uh, changed uh, dramatically throughout time, and oh, yeah. ebbs and flows and changes. And you know, like you have times where like the handlebar mustache is super popular, and you have times when the sideburns are super popular. Um, I think it's uh, it has a lot to do with. Um, uh, signifying, um, like class and, um, uh, virility was a big one too, that yeah, it was like a sign of potency. Yeah. Like they would, uh, you know, oh, I, mean, I got a beard. I'm going to give you so many goddamn babies. Right. They, uh, they had a weird perception that, uh, a beard was synonymous with, uh, uh, virility and things like that. So it's interesting. I mean, a beard is a, a very natural thing, but some people can't grow beards. So they, um, like I have people come in and, and talk to me and they're like, oh, your beard's, like giving me a compliment on my beard is like giving me a compliment on my uh, height or mm-hmm. something like I have no control over it. Like I just grow a beard. It's yeah. just it's genetic and I'm a man, so it's a possibility. But uh, getting compliments on it is kind of nice, but it's, uh, I, it's not much of a feat, you know. But then some guys can't grow beards and they're like you know they like feel bad about it but it's like it's not an ability like it's not a skill no um i guess it's an an ability that your body has but not that you create you know well i think it can look nice in uh upkeep and grooming i mean like you could just let it fucking get crazy but yeah i was uh i watched a video last night about um how um you know, or do women find men with beards attractive? And um, they did these surveys at this study uh, at this uh, college or something. And uh, they came up with like the kind of ger- gen- general generic answer was that uh, females like uh, a little bit of stubble to a nice groomed beard, but nothing too long and shaggy because that just comes across as kind of uh, um, less... Um, like more wild and like a bum or something like that. So it's, you know, they Mm -hmm. like the beard. They don't like it clean shaved because it makes them look younger, less like they have resources. Cause I guess older, you know, older men tend to be more attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I guess, I don't know. And why do you, um, do you have a particular reason for why you grow a beard or why you wear a beard? I have a couple reasons. One is I've been shaving since eighth fucking grade <laughs> and I don't like it. And it's, uh, you know, just a chore, a chore. And, uh, so I just, you know, if I can get away with it, I just don't shave or, or, you know, I just let it grow and then I, I trim it and keep it clean and all that. Um, it's just easier, you know, it's, you know, shaving every, you know, going through razors. It's just more stuff to yeah. do. Um, and, uh, the other reason that I, th- I think subconsciously I started doing it was every time I would shave my beard off, I realized that I looked like my dad again and my dad never wore a beard. He always wore a mustache Mm because he's, you know, older generation. The mustache was much more popular and, um, or he would wear like a goatee every once in a while or something, you know, different things, but never really a full beard all the time. And so I would wear a beard and then I, I wouldn't be right. I wouldn't remember that I look like my dad and, um, it would kind of differentiate me from me from him. And, you know, um, I don't want to look like my dad cause I don't want to emulate him. And, uh, you know, I have, um, you know, kind of issues with our relationship and stuff. So yeah. it was always kind of weird to like, we look exactly alike, like for the most part, especially while I was growing up, I think I've gotten a little bit away from it, but, um, people always said we looked exla- you know, mm-hmm. exactly alike. And I was like, uh, I don't want to be like him. So I don't want to look like him and I don't have a choice on that. So growing a beard was a way to kind of, uh, I don't know, deny that <laughs> fact, <laughs> I guess. Lie to yourself. Yeah. To not have to think about it or to not, you know, just to have my own identity, I guess, um, away from, from him. Um, 
and I'm a I'm mostly over that now. Like when I shave now, I don't care that much that yeah. like, we happen to look alike. I get it; it's fine. Um, it's but I nice. like a beard. I yeah. think it looks good, and I get compliments on it. So why wouldn't I want to mm-hmm. do it? You know. Um, I just shaved the other day for the first time in like a year and it was just like this huge event for everybody. And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh, I just want to start over. And I look super young doing it. Yeah. Like I, I look like, I don't know. I just feel like I look like 20 again, uh, which is not, I don't care to look young. I don't know. Um, why do you wear a beard um, regularly now? I mean, you didn't for a while. and then Yeah. Well, um, kind of like you, I mean, I started having facial hair come in probably like around eighth grade. But it was always like very faint and weak, obviously. Um, so I've been shaving since I was probably like thirteen, roughly. Um, and I like I would try growing it out here and there, and it just like when I would look in the mirror, it just didn't grow the way that I wanted. It just was like too patchy, or um, my mustache was just really, really weak for a long time, like almost non-existent. But then the rest of my face would have like mm-hmm. a bunch of hair, so it just always looked weird to me. So I just stayed clean shaven. Um, but I've always I've always wanted to have facial hair because I uh, in high school had really bad acne that has just destroyed my face. I have like a lot of pock marks and like little mini craters and stuff. And so I, I mostly wear it now is just a way to like hide all this like mm. scarring and damage that my face has on it from uh, like years of fucking acne. Mm-hmm. But um, it wasn't really until probably almost like a year ago that I finally was able to grow like a nice full beard. And like a mustache that blends well with it where it just looks nice. Like I'm very, I like symmetry and Mm -hmm. like, I'm very like picky about my appearance. And so, um, and I don't let it get very long. Like every two weeks I have like a trimmer and Mm -hmm. I trim it down, which I just did actually recently. I like to keep it nice and clean. I don't want to look like a homeless person or, or anything like that. Um, so I mostly just wear it just to, shield my poor face from yeah. all the damage that it's gone through um and it makes me look a lot different too i feel like it makes me look a little bit more um I don't know, like daunting i guess I, I don't know like i feel like uh yeah. beards like tend to you just look more serious and mm-hmm. um i think it definitely makes you look older and yeah. more um um i think i don't know maybe that's somewhat more intimidating or somewhat more powerful um just in that your di- it's a physical display of your male yeah it's almost like um a mini self-esteem boost in a way like it well it's a self-esteem boost for sure actually due to my acne damage i mm. actually had a, a hard time um looking people in the face like i didn't want people looking at my face because i knew that um how it looked mm. and so now that i have a beard i i can just look people in the eye i don't care like it, most of it's covered sure. up with my facial hair it it's clean. It's well kept. Like I don't. It, uh, like now I am comfortable looking people in the face and, oh, that's and talking good. to them and stuff. So it's a big self esteem boost for me. And I um actually like three months ago I had to shaved it all off too when we moved to our new place um because I messed up while I was trimming and I was like <laughs> ah fuck now I just got to start all over and mm-hmm. so I just shaved the whole thing off and immediately just hated. It. I was like uh now I just got to wait like a couple of weeks before it comes back and um it was awful. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I probably never and does not have a beard now because of. It just makes me feel good. Yeah, I mean, why not? If, yeah. yeah, it looks good, and uh, it's... Uh, it, why not? I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It's pretty superficial, ultimately, you know? Yeah. But if it uh, has a positive impact on the way you deal with people, then that's wonderful. Um, way to... I'm just... So good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, and uh, I was going to mention, uh, I think part of it is... A kind of mask yeah. for men, at least for me, because like I said, I, it's a way that I can differentiate myself and look different than someone that I don't necessarily and haven't uh, wanted to see in the mirror. Like, I don't want to see my dad in the mirror. Mm-hmm. I want to see myself. Um, so that's a, a bit of a mask. And then it, I think in general, it's a bit of a mask because it kind of, I don't know, it kind of is a, a, a way to... Um, bolster some of maybe you know displaying some manhood that maybe you don't have maybe you just kind of maybe you're kind of bolstering a little bit of confidence that you wouldn't normally have so Mm -hmm. maybe that's part of it i don't know if that's the issue with me but um i was talking to somebody who's in car sales and you will rarely see a car salesman with beards at least not full like bushy beards they Mm. might have some really clean beards because appearance to a a car salesman and a lot of salespeople um appearance is hugely important because their job is to make you feel 
uh, personable and and they got to be friendly and they got to, um, you know, explain things and, and they got to be really welcoming of anyone. And so by having an intimidating beard or a, a um, you know, a display of, of uh, manliness, you know, that's just distracting from that situation mm-hmm. and might be a barrier there. And it also kind of hides their face. So we are really good at recognizing faces. And so when you wear a beard, it makes you look very different than when you don't look wear a beard. So if you look at like pictures, it can definitely change the way that uh, uh, you look and it takes a little bit to, to differentiate. But he was saying that um, this guy I was talking to said that I was like, so if you wear a beard and you're a salesman, people don't really like that as much and you can do better as a salesman if you're clean shaven. And mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, it's because um, they don't, you don't want to act like you're hiding anything because they're already skeptical of you because you're a salesman. And so they need to feel really secure that you are the person that you are. And, you know, they want to get to know you and feel trustworthy. It's about trust. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a subconscious kind of a, um, uh, perception that people have, you know, if the more of your face they can see, the more they can remember and, and feel like you're not hiding anything from them. Uh, but that's just an interesting possibility. Like, um, there's almost like a maybe a little bit of a sociological aspect to it in that like typically villains and, and mean people yeah. and bikers and stuff have facial mm-hmm. hair and like heroes and nice. Yeah. Superman. Good home, you know, wholesome boys were always clean shaven. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that, that kind of plays into it from, mm-hmm. you know, growing up watching movies and, and seeing how characters are portrayed that, um, not saying that people with fucking facial hair are all just bad guys, but no. in a way, like I feel like it, you you develop this subconscious idea that um, if they're clean shaven and they have a nice haircut and they're just clean yeah. and smiling, that they're a good person and you can trust them. Yeah. But if they're maybe not, if they're a little standoffish and yeah. have facial hair, that they're maybe not like the best person and you should be wary of them. Sure. Um, Which is another part of the mask because mm-hmm. if you're not actually a very, if you're not a very Um, intimidating person but you want to be perceived as intimidating or you know somewhat uh, stronger than you are then you might wear a beard so that you portray what those villains portray which is this kind of confidence and callousness or something Mm -hmm. Um, so I could see that being a part of it as well so you're trying to blend in with this other group that you wouldn't normally blend into Um, interesting yeah Hmm. I just remember I, I think I remember when I was a kid that I was kind of always a little bit more afraid of people that I saw with facial hair or that were bald. Like there's something about Ooh. people being bald that I don't, it just well, there's like, Lex Luthor. Maybe that one. Has something <laughs> yeah. Them. But I, they just, they look mean, I guess it, like they just have that yeah. look, even if they're not trying to be, it's just like, yeah. that's just how it always came across to me. And so, yeah. Um, I think that's interesting because um, in researching testosterone to get an idea if testosterone had an impact on beard growth, which it seems like if it does, it's pretty minor, Mm -hmm. Um, as in um, differences in testosterone among men doesn't necessarily mean you will or will not grow a beard. It's more of a genetic issue, Um, and testosterone is just the hormone um, that... Um, initiates it is a catalyst for it uh, during puberty and um, if you just happen to not have the genes to grow it you won't it doesn't mean you don't have less testosterone but anyway um, yeah there's um, yeah in during puberty it's um, beard growth it's it's linked to the stimulation of hair follicles um, mm-hmm. by dihydrotestosterone mm-hmm. which um, it's basically just like a hormone that stimulates your hair follicles. And that's mm-hmm. why when you, when men hit puberty, this particular type of testosterone essentially mm-hmm. goes into your follicles and starts creating, um, like it stimulates growth it. and yeah, facial hair to, yeah. and, and things like that. So like, that's like really about the only thing that t- as far as testosterone goes into playing into it is it, it kind of starts at it. Yeah. Jump it starts like it's the body the, into doing it. Right. If you didn't have testosterone, you wouldn't uh, create hair there. And, um, just because you don't have hair there doesn't mean you don't have testosterone because you would have gone through other, um, uh, there are other effects that testosterone have or whatever. Uh And not having a lot of testosterone is not bad anyway. Um, I think we, it does relate to maleness Mm -hmm. and it does relate to, um, uh, sex drive and, um, indicators of male, uh, uh, the male sex. But, um, you know, there's nothing 
good or bad about that necessarily. So I think people just feel like they're missing out on something if they don't have a beard or they don't grow a big one or something. But um, and then we were talking about you said dihydrotestosterone, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, responsible for um, baldness. You know, mm. later on. Yeah. So even which can happen very early on in um, like uh, post puberty, mm-hmm. pu- post pubescent. Um, so if you, it's actually like if you have a lot of testosterone, you you might you know get into puberty a little earlier. You're going to grow. It stimulates. Um, um, bone maturation and bone density and muscle mass and uh, creates all those kind of like uh, strong jawline. It kind of uh, takes some of the f- uh, subcutaneous fat away from the face, um, which is all signs of like manliness. And so um, if uh, if you kind of have this massive amount of testosterone, like a l- larger than um, maybe your body is necessarily able to contain or something, then testosterone actually turns into the dihydrotestosterone which is responsible for baldness of your head. So it's actually like you have testosterone, but the more you have, the more sensitive you are, the more chances you're going to go bald earlier or bald, you know, at all. Um, Which is kind of funny because it's like we think of like more testosterone is better, but ultimately uh, it can cause, uh, you can, you know, it might be actually a sign of baldness or whatever. There's also a... um it seems like it's like a, it's 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 like a mix of testosterone like levels of it, but and yeah. then like genetics. Like if your mm-hmm. family is predisposed to balding earlier, or having a lot of facial hair, yeah, for it, sure. Um, and helps. your genetics dictates the amount of testosterone, and and I'm sure environment is in there as well as far as. But uh, there's a there's a little bit it. here about um, evolutionary psychology, um, which explains that the existence of beards is um, it's a signaling of sexual maturity maturity. Um, because it's, uh, basically it, it, it makes you, it increases the perception that your jaw is bigger and, um, it's a, like a sign of dominance. So you have like this kind of big, like you, oh, like that yeah. chiseled manly jaw, like a beard yeah. makes your, your face seem, um, larger and more dominant. Hmm. And that's why clean shaven people appear yeah. not as frightening because their face is smaller. And, that's interesting. Um, yeah. And I bet the face for, uh, evolutionary purposes in animals is, uh, um, a big sign of um, nutrition because if you get a lot of food, then you're going to uh, grow larger. And then it's also probably a sign of how good you are at hunting because and growling and fending off things mm-hmm. because you'll you'll have a bigger because yeah, if you, uh, an animal teeth. saw you with like this monster, beard, yeah, because then be they might be afraid of it. So then, in you know, in uh, sexual selection, that probably has a, a an impact on it. And so beards. Um, were selected for because of the um, yeah they say the they're right of. here that uh, the scholars are kind of divided as to whether um, sexual selection is from beards is rooted in attractiveness or um, which is intersexual selection or dominance which is intra sexual selection um, so it's probably them trying to decide whether females are attracted to it because it portrays a dominant being or if they just physically find it attractive for, you know, whatever reason. Well, they got to um, have a reason to find yeah. it attractive. <laughs> so it's either dominance or it's just a sign of of uh, age and, and uh, an indicator of their sex. And then, you know, early on it might have just been an indicator of uh, health in yeah. general. I don't know. Yeah, that's what they're saying right here. Is a it, it's an indicator for a, a man's overall condition. So they probably assume that you're yeah. healthy if you've got this nice, big, thick, yeah, and lush maybe beard you know, you or can, something. There's a certain genetic marker in it um, that you can see. Um, what else did I want to? Oh, I was going to say. Um, so women also have uh, testosterone, and uh, men just have about seven to eight times higher. And then it was saying that um, on a daily basis, men can produce up to 20 times as much testosterone uh, than females. So it's a definite <laughs> differentiator. Yeah, that's the, crazy. The sexes. Um, I think that's why Do some s- females oh, like end up having a little bit of facial hair. It's because they probably have a little bit higher testosterone yeah. levels. Did they say um, when the when you said that they can produce up to twenty times more? Mm-hmm. Did they specify like is that due to certain activity or? Well, um, uh, testosterone in the was, body is uh-huh. is um, um, 
created and then probably absorbed um, all, all throughout the day. And there's this cycle where I think it um, it goes up like in the early morning and then it starts to tail off and then it comes back in the early morning. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that that might have to do with um, it definitely has stuff to do with sexuality. So maybe it, it uh, stimulates um, uh, some kind of sexual urges during the 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 morning daytime mm -hmm. or something maybe that's just a, oh. a i thought evolutionary thing. like tied to like what a person does during the, like well there's physically some active like it produces more testosterone versus just like sitting around all day or something um like that. i don't know about exercise i wanted to look that up and that's mm -hmm. something i didn't look up was whether or not exercise stimulates testosterone and it, i would be very surprised if it didn't um because um, I've been exercising a lot lately and it feels like my testosterone level has gone up as far as, um, um, that goes. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, that would be something to look up, but there was, uh, other things, other activities that do, uh, change testosterone levels, which are interesting that I found, which was, um, one is that, um, when a man falls in love, mm. quote unquote, or gets married or whatever, um, within the first few years, their testosterone level will go down. Um, and this is, there's a couple theories. One is that they are engaging in similar behaviors as the other sex, and so they don't need this this large amount of testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, but because testosterone also has to do with um, uh, sexual drive, um, sex drive is a big part of that. Um, I think it's probably because the sex drive is not as high when you have a, a kind of a long term mate, and so you don't your high level of testosterone is going to lead to you seeking out females. Mm -hmm. And if you already have a female, then you don't need that high level. So it drops off and um, allows for pair bonding to last longer, yeah. um, which is beneficial for childbearing uh, or at least for um, the beginning stages of uh, sexual selection and all that. And then, um, and, I, and then they also said masturbation uh, among women and men uh, increases testosterone levels. Um, so if you masturbate, you, your testosterone level will go up, uh, if you, even if you're a woman. Uh, so that's interesting. So if anyone tells you to not masturbate, like if you're like lifting weights or something mm -hmm. like as a man or even a woman, they're wrong. Like yeah. they, you should definitely masturbate because it actually helps your stimulation of your muscle growth and your bone, uh, growth as well. If you're younger. Um, and then uh, if you have a child, uh, men who have children, their testosterone level, if they hang out with the kid, if they're mm. like with the kid, if they um, go on daily activities with the kid and with their wife, uh, one or the other, then testosterone levels go down. I think that just has to do with sex drive. Um, because Probably. if you have this massive sex drive, then you're not going to take care of your kid. So if you're hanging out with your kid, your body's like, okay, we're, we've already done what we need to do. We don't need to have this massive sex drive. Unless you're like and a weird chimo. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna go there. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I don't know. I mean, that's just fucked up. In general. Yeah, no, and that, that could is, be a major. That there's yeah. probably some other shit that's going like on some there. Some psychological. Problems. Yeah, that's obviously a different. That's a non-common um, case. Well, I did find something on that uh, exercising. Exercising. Yeah. What's it saying? So, um, essentially, the f the f the four factors that matter in testosterone is your weight. Um, so obviously the larger you are, the more obese you are, the lower your testosterone is, mm. um, your age, obviously you hit this prime of, of, yeah, you know, it starts and then going as down you get older, older, it just kind of, it, it dwindles down over time. Um, and then exercising, they say that, uh, testosterone levels are typically highest in the morning. So they, they actually recommend that people work out in the morning because hmm. your body is at its peak. But as far as its effect on um, exercising, they said that it does boost your testosterone, but for a very limited time. They said it, it can be anywhere from like 15 minutes to an hour after you're done exercising. Your testosterone kind of just levels itself back out. Yeah. Um, it has um, bigger, longer results if you're getting in shape because you're essentially taking a body that's not used to doing these activities putting them in the activity so your body is trying to compensate by injecting more testosterone and in, into mm. it to try to keep it going yeah. essentially so it, the better you shape you're in the less of a testosterone boost you get from working out because your body's used to doing it yeah so it's versus, always a little bit higher instead of this mm -hmm. ch fluctuation is yeah. so large as opposed to when you probably start working out mm -hmm. for the first time yeah that's really interesting it just uh so it, it seems like it just like wakes you up and boosts you for a while and then yeah. once you're you know it just kind of levels itself out which makes sense because, I mean, like, I run every morning for the most part, um, at least, like, four or five times a week. And um, 
I mean, once I like can drag myself out of bed and and like mm-hmm. get my stuff on, once I actually get outside and start running, I actually feel just fine. Yeah. And um, when I'm done running, like when I'm you know getting ready for work and stuff, I'm like wide awake and ready to go. Yeah. But usually, like by the time I uh, get to work and start doing stuff, I've like settled down. And you almost kind of start to feel tired a little bit again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I can kind of uh, yeah understand. I that think that's probably a pretty typical um. Uh, as far as hunter gatherers is they probably wake up right at the crack of dawn and go yeah, fucking go hunt, hunt. Mm-hmm. and so that was probably uh that's probably part of it is that and you then would you go would hunt and then meal. you would rest yeah and then you would rest and you'd chill out during the hottest part of the day and then at night you whatever you know chill mm-hmm. out and go to bed um so that makes sense that's interesting um I know that uh, men typically in their 40s, 50s start to lose testosterone, and yeah. that can have a big effect on health in general um, and energy levels. So then they mm-hmm. take testosterone uh, therapy and t- testosterone replacement therapy so that they can uh, increase, you know, keep their sef- sex drive up and keep their, um, you know, if they work out, if they're fit, you know, then they keep their energy level up and they can continue doing that. And yeah. um, I think as long as you have a doctor, you know, helping you along that, I think that's probably good. And, you know, we're living longer than we ever have mm-hmm. uh supposedly in history so you know <laughs> our bodies are probably like what are you fucking alive for dude yeah you, you already well, had your time well, call the cancer and let's take this bitch down yeah this is, we are not supposed to be around still yeah for sure um my dad actually was um he did i don't know if he still does but he had to go in for testosterone treatment because he was just so exhausted all the time like yeah. even on days that he didn't really do much or didn't work he would just be really tired and so he went to the doctor and they just found that his his testosterone levels were low. And so he had to, yeah. it was like a, a fucking shot that he basically got. I think it was like a once a month, you would just go in and they uh, um, just give you a shot and yeah. fucking boost your levels for a while. And yeah. Then, like I said, I don't know if he still does it or if it was just he just did it for a while or what. Well, so. maybe it helped him, uh, his body recompensate. Yeah, I don't know. If I don't maybe know. if it could like stimulate your body back into producing more testosterone or not, or if it, or he just had to do it fuck forever. It. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, just fuck like it, I don't, don't do it anymore. Um, and then I was also reading that um, men with higher levels of testosterone tend to um, be less monogamous, less long-term relationships, and uh, will seek extramarital um, relationships, divorce more likely. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is I don't know what this uh, effect is. It's probably pretty minor as far as... Uh, so the lower their testosterone is, the higher... Yeah, the higher chance that they'll stay monogamous for longer uh, or have these longer-term relationships and not... Um, I think it just has to do with sex drive, mostly, I would imagine. I would think that, like, if you had lower testosterone, that your relationships wouldn't last as long because it would be almost like your body naturally trying to find a way to boost the testosterone by, like, seeking other females. I think it's, it's like the a other primal. Way around. Oh, I think that's the testosterone how I would think is of it. when, if your testosterone is kind of dictating your level of sex drive, mm-hmm. not the other way around. You're not. Well, no, you, I can see that. Like, if you have high sex drive and. And you're with a partner that doesn't necessarily yeah. want to have sex as frequently as you want to have. Um, you would just immediately start kind of seeking out. Well, yeah. But I could almost see it on the flip side where like your body's like like finding a way to try to pick itself up by maybe. But your body doesn't care. Your body is just producing these things naturally. It doesn't you don't know. care if you want to have sex or not. does care. I just think <laughs> it, it makes sense because essentially you're, if you're, you know, you you have a lower level of testosterone, you just sort of are closer to um being similar to a female as far as um like sex drive mm-hmm. right so i don't know if that's true but maybe that just allows you to be um more on the same level and you're not sitting there trying to find other people or something and it might relate to uh disposition in general and aggressiveness and stuff like that too mm-hmm. i don't know um i think that there are some some concepts that men are naturally like aggressive and violent, um, which I, I don't think, you know, after reading that other book that we talked about a couple times ago about the history of war, war and child, and child abuse. abuse. Yeah. yeah. He talks about how testosterone boys tend to have uh, violent tendencies before testosterone starts to boost in their systems. Yeah. I mean, you're just a product of your right. The environment is a huge part of that. So yeah. I think most of this stuff is, uh, has lesser effects than um, environment, which probably engages whether or not well, you're it probably a bunch of testosterone. Makes like men are probably more susceptible to it because of testosterone, right? That that than has women. To do with I mean, it. Women can be just as aggressive. I feel like, but they oh, don't yeah. have like that extra hormone. Well, I don't. I just don't think testosterone overdrive. has to do with aggression. I think it just has to do with uh, sexual stuff mm-hmm. for the most part. But then. Um, 
Um, well, I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. Interesting stuff, though. Yeah, it is. I would just so it before we started this, I I think I went with the idea that testosterone and beard growth were just kind of related. Just the more yeah. you had flown through you, the you know the more facial hair you could grow, and like just body hair in general, like chest yeah. hair and and back hair and stuff like that. But yeah, men have pretty st- stable, you know, average you know, testosterone levels. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't explain why some have yeah. body hair and some don't. I think it's that's just genetic predisposition. Um, so don't feel bad if you don't have a bunch of facial hair. Yeah, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's your dad's fault. Let's get some Rogaine for your face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure they make that. Just blame your dad. I want one person that listens to this that really wants a beard that can't to call their dad after listening and just be like, you you fucked me on this, man. My fucking jeans. My one dream really, in life was really to grow a full set of hair on my face. And you just, you boned me, dad. You really boned me. You really boned me on that one. <laughs> Why'd you have to have me? Um word anything else about uh beards testosterone male stuff no no i think we we covered it i mean we could we could we could go through a breakdown of uh <laughs> beard statuses through history but i don't think that'd be particularly exciting no i don't think i care enough and actually um beards haven't even been that big of a thing in the united states since i mean 20 they said like 2010 was like kind of the reemergence of beards but before then it was like the 60s with like the hippies and stuff that was like the last time the beards were like a fad and, huh. and a fashionable thing that people did you know what i bet that i bet part of that is sociologically um is that during the 60s not only were beards synonymous with the hippie movement but um uh military they have clean shave they're clean shaved right mm. and so um if you're trying to protest a war and all of these you know soldiers are all clean shaved nice you know this and that all fucking rigid and looking the same then a beard is the opposite of what it takes you couldn't yeah. have a beard and be in the military so maybe there's a kind of a protesting the norm in having a beard and that's something that's carried over over since the 60s i think that was i think that would be true for like the 60s because of vietnam and that's the strife yeah, I was that was going that on has something to do i feel like it. nowadays though it's just it just has somehow become like a mm-hmm. fashion symbol yeah. or thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few more years it just kind of dies out and I know, would, something yeah. else, you know, comes up instead. But I, that makes sense for that time period. Yeah. You know, they're protesting it, they're at peace and yeah. being in touch with the earth and whatever Maybe else. Maybe it's um, negatively correlated with porn stars shaving off their pubes. Maybe as women get rid of more hair, men are like, well, we should get more hair. Yeah, you got to have a really good hair balance. Yeah, we got to have a hair it's balance. It's skin on skin. That's just chafing and skin discomfort for everyone. Because that's I don't not know. happening. I mean, oh, I, that whole last sentence is just completely made up. Yeah, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> there's a, a natural uh, balance in the universe for hair growth. Women start getting rid of it. There's a hair god who's yeah. just like, mm, mm, mm. beards must come back in. Yes. Everybody's shaving their pubes. If the bush <laughs> goes, not good. the beard comes back. Uh, that seems like a valid theory. Let's look into it. It's the most sensible one that I can think of. I bet we can figure it out. Let's do I just want to write a short story about this now. The hair god is what the I'll call it. <laughs> the hair god named uh, Testosterobe. We should know. We could do it as a like a monologue. Just of the hair god <laughs> I am the hair himself. god. I don't know. Or he's talking to somebody else, some other god. The fucking, uh, the teeth god. The skin god. Who's the skin There's god. way too much skin <laughs> we need to <laughs> have. We need to cover more of your stuff up. Yeah. Hey, hair guy. Can we get uh, this figured out here? I don't know. <laughs> All these people are bald. They look like bulldogs and little kids. Mm-hmm. Bulldogs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why bald people are scary. I don't know. Maybe there's just something uh, <laughs> Maybe like it, they look like they're dying or something. That's <laughs> the funny th- thing about being you bald. Is we're in a because cancer is so prevalent now. You have to um, if they look kind of sickly, you're just like, oh, that's a cancer patient. That oh, sucks. that's they're, sad. You went from being like scary to now I just feel bad for you. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if it, too. I feel like don't. I mean, people who go to prison typically are bald, right? They don't. They shave their head and. 
I think part of uh, when you get into prison is they they yeah. cut your hair that could short be it too. But it's I don't know association with crime and being a criminal. I think there's probably an association with um, like that particular subculture of like bikers and criminals and things that tend to have hair. A lot of bald facial people, hair. Not a lot of them, but there's quite a few people, like bald people I've seen that typically have like a bunch of fucking tattoos like on their neck and their head and shit. And that's probably why they're bald. Yeah, so they I think that's that when off. you notice it more. But yeah, yeah, I don't know what. We'll, we'll have to do a totally different podcast on bald heads, but, <laughs> which we can't relate to. We'll have to get a bald guy in here. My uh, One of my buddies has uh, essentially oh, go. been going bald just, since he's like 20. You can just Well, see, I feel like if you're going bald, like if I was he's going pretty bald, bald now, um, I would probably just shave my whole head. Uh, that's what he did, yeah. Like I said, I enjoy the symmetrical, like, fullness of mm-hmm. thing, like of everything. I like it to look uniform, which is why I didn't grow facial hair for a long time because my my mustache was so faded that it it didn't flow in with my beard and it just looked bad to me. Yeah. Which so if I was going bald, then I would probably just shave my whole head because it would just look disjointed and it would bother me every day. But I think that's probably another reason why a lot of people do shave their heads. It's just like, well, I'm already fucking going bald. Oh yeah. Just embrace it. Yeah, I mean, who cares? It's fucking hair. Or you have those awesome guys who do like the comb over thing. Like, no, it's mm-hmm. not yeah. going bald up here. Yeah. That's hilarious. This over. Or they wear a shitty wig or whatever. I'd I'd rather go bald than wear a wig. I mean, yeah. or you know, like shave toupee. it or whatever. Uh, Two pacers can be really silly, <laughs> um, because you're not fooling anyone. You just spent money on this thing to not fool <laughs> anybody. Uh, unless it's really good. It's crazy with all the advances in medicine that there ha- there's just not like a definite foolproof thing that just makes your hair grow back. But unless yeah. it's just your your hair follicles are just dead and there's just nothing they can do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just the way it goes. It's just not not growing anymore. And hair's already dead anyway, which is interesting enough. Yeah. Um, I can always thank, I, as much as I don't want to necessarily look like my dad, I can always thank him because... Not that it's his fucking fault, uh, but uh, he's still got a full head of hair, and he's like, you know, almost sixty. So I, I don't have to worry about baldness. I don't think. Yeah, I don't either. Nobody in my, everybody in my family is yeah. good to go. I just have to worry about obesity and aneurysms. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, high blood pressure, that, high blood pressure. Disease. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's pregnancy. A my mom had two kids. Like that's, that's a disease, a... <laughs> man. You better look out for that. But watch yourself. Yeah. You better get fixed. But no, I don't. I don't. I don't even think about going bald. Actually, yeah, that'd be my luck. Though I'd be like the first person in my family to just have. Well, stress could thing. probably do it. I think yeah. that could. Fuck actually, you up. a lot of people on my mom's side of the family go gray pretty early. My mom and my yeah. grandmother started getting gray by the time they were like thirty. Yeah. So. Yeah, my, I'll be like George Clooney. That's all. Yeah, I I'm I was thinking about it the other day. Like I I'm okay with going gray. I mean, I've always looked a little bit older, and uh, men look distinguished and awesome when they're mm-hmm. older. As long as I'm not a fat ass, you know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm right? somewhat attractive anyway. I'm I'm down. I don't care about going gray. My last name's Gray. What do I care about? I was gonna yeah. I, was gonna I had to make a comment about, about it. that. Yeah. I was gonna be like, I was born gray. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dumb well now you have a sweet line for when you do finally go gray mm-hmm. and i'll say it like an old southern gray. gentleman yeah. i was born gray <laughs> <laughs> my uh, hair's always looked like this since i was a young boy um anyway i wanted to um talk about our just to go away from this silliness um uh our last podcast we talked about the interview and it turns out that that was a bunch of bullshit so we were laboring under some false information and, i knew uh, I, f- I felt like that was going to happen because we're like a week behind on our releases so what we yeah. talked about is like a week old by the time people hear it and i knew Something, after we talked yeah. about it that um by the time that episode posted that it was all going to be like water under the bridge essentially and yeah then, yeah we had some some interesting things to say but i just listened to the podcast and i was like oh that nope <laughs> nope that seems like it was a bunch of bullshit and uh, it was mostly about sony getting all of their information um taken from them and uh the hackers took some credit for like saying that they were gonna bomb yeah. when that wasn't even their original thing that they said and then they released the movie anyway and then on christmas the movie gets released which is what we didn't expect and then the entire sony and microsoft networks go down because hackers controlled them and took them down uh which doesn't really follow the narrative that they were just really mad at sony because they took down microsoft as well so i think it was just hackers just having well fun. they um they actually just arrested one of the guys because the they? hacker the hacker group was called the lizard squad and they yeah. uh they just arrested one of the guys 
and they were like doing an interview with him and they they asked why they did it and they were just they said that the reason why they were they did it was because they could yeah and um because they just wanted to prove how weak yeah their security systems which were they did and like i was reading that they said it like the guy claimed the one the the one that they arrested he claimed that the, the it was only three of them that took down both networks and one of them was like a 13 year old kid yeah and so well which i don't know if that's true that's just what he said but if that's true i'm just like that's fucking crazy that yeah. just three people one of them's like barely a teenager yeah. can take down these major companies networks that we pay 50 60 dollars a year just to use yep. and part of the reason why you pay is because you're paying for the security of yeah and um yeah it, the whole thing is just crazy they need but. to they need to work on it they need yeah. to get it figured out and they need to um they need to make customers happy again and it's really bullshit that I mean, hackers can do a lot of damage and they can do a lot of, um, you know, interesting things. But, you know, they're just ruining people's good time yeah. to make a point. And I get that they were like, the guy was saying that I was looking at, he was like, well, if the worst thing that happens is that these kids can't play online. And they have to spend time with their the family. But it's and, not yeah. your job to force people to do things. Like, thanks for making a, a fucking moral statement out of your yeah. destructive behavior. But ultimately, you're just kind of... You're just kind of, you know, destroying and and using, you know, this kind of uh, backhanded kind of bullshit just to play your games with the American public or with the the whole, you know, Mm -hmm. PlayStation and Microsoft network. I just think it's, you know, if you want to make a statement, do something to Sony. Don't do something to all the customers who are not in, you know, they just want a product. They don't want entertainment. They're not doing anything bad. You know, you can't force people to go. Hang. They have iPads. They they're not going to just go hang out with their parents if they don't want to. You know, so uh, I thought that was an interesting thing. But they definitely, you know, that is a sign they need to work on their security. Mm. And I, if we pay them money, we should get some security. You yeah, know? exactly. People have their credit cards on there. That's important. Um, but that I just wanted to mention that real quick. And then um, I also wanted to. Uh, ask you how you liked the movie Into the Woods because we had mentioned that oh, and yeah. you actually went to go see it, but I haven't seen it yet. So yeah, no, uh, Vanessa and I went and watched it. Um, it was like a few days after. I don't know. It was like a couple days ago, but it was it was okay. I'm not a big fan of musicals, so I feel like my um, impression of it um, is a little skewed, <laughs> just because I'm not. Sure. I don't really uh, care for musicals, but it, it was okay. I felt like it was too long, so. I, I it's based off a Broadway musical written by uh, Sondheim, and he helped write the and do the movie and stuff. And, mm. um, um, so I didn't know that actually going into it that it was actually based off a musical. I thought it was something that Disney and whoever else kind of threw together for funsies. And um, but I guess like the when I was looking at the trailers and stuff, I was under the impression that it was. Um, they market it like a family movie and like, oh, it's all these fairy tales that you, you know, you grew up with kind of mingled together in this musical foray. And um, really like the, the, I guess the Broadway musical, they, they, when they, when they turned the film or when they did the film adaptation, blah, that was a terrible sentence. Um, they cut whole scenes from the musical out because it was so dark and mature. And I guess like the, the musical isn't really meant for children at, um, at all. And so, when I I didn't know any of this when I went in to watch it, I was just expecting it to be like a family friendly musical, whatever. Like Vanessa really wanted to go see it, so I was appeasing her as uh, my husbandly duty. And um, and that was just re- like some of the lyrics and stuff are very. There's just there's a lot of like sexual innuendo in it, mm. and um, Johnny Depp's like this kind of rapey pimp wolf character that just has like a a number that's five minutes long about him just being really excited about doing stuff with a little girl and her grandma like they <laughs> they portray it as him being excited about eating it but just like the the lyric usage that they have is sure. very suggestive which a little kid wouldn't pick up on but i'm just like sitting there watching them like is this, are they really singing this right now this is crazy yeah um but i don't know it, overall it was okay it was just caught me off guard and i felt like it was way too long i mean there was even kids in the theater who were getting fidgety like yeah i bet you know an hour and a half in they're like we had like one little girl just kicking the back of our seat because she was climbing around the the couple of empty seats behind us and stuff and hmm. i'm just like it, 
I feel like they didn't really know who it was for. Yeah. Like they marketed it for a family, but it was too long for kids. It's not particularly exciting. There's a couple really funny moments. Um, one number between the two princes, which is uh, was played by Chris Pine and some other guy I'd never seen, was hilarious. Like I was laughing the whole time. Oh, yeah. It was really funny. It was well done. But most of that movie is just kind of boring. Like yeah. there's not much going on. It's just these people going into the woods for different reasons and then they meet and things happen or whatever. But um, – it was okay. I don't yeah. know. Well, I don't know. I don't <laughs> want to see it anymore. <laughs> I think that it would be more exciting to watch as a Broadway musical. Yeah. It probably is a really good Broadway yeah. musical and they always they're always trying to, you know, capitalize on a good idea and they'll turn a, you know, Broadway musical into a movie or they'll turn a movie into a Broadway musical. Like I was like kind of upset that they didn't do a movie of um, the Book of Mormon because I want to see the Book of Mormon but mm-hmm. it's not coming to our town. Yeah. So it's like I just want to see it. I'm just really curious what it is but I don't think it would be as good. I think it'd be better if I just went to see the play at some yeah. point. Um, and that's, a, you know, adaptations and it doesn't come across the same and they probably spent a ton of money on it. So yeah. it sounds like they didn't really f- gear it toward the right audience. Yeah, that's, like, why, that's how I felt about it is yeah. they, they either should have made it a little bit shorter and more kind of slapsticky, lighthearted for kids, or they should have went the opposite direction, maintained all these scenes that they cut out of it and just kept it as less darker. Because, I mean, those fairy tales, when they were originally written, were like cautionary tales for Very like, young dark, women yeah. and stuff. And you can tell from like the songs that it's all just really a message to young women about staying away from men because we're all oh. fucking primal sexual beasts. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't <laughs> there wasn't really any like memorable songs in it either. The 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 song with the two princes uh, is the only one that I can remember a couple of the lines to that was kind of catchy. But the rest of them were all just kind of blase. <laughs> yeah, for lack of a better word. Yeah, um, I totally. If, the, if those songs have to be, yeah, uh, very epic. And I feel like every time you like magical. watch a musical, there's usually like one or two songs that you just kind of are stuck in your head and yeah. you're just kind of singing them to yourself or humming them. But I there was like one song that I uh, yeah. really remembered, and a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the songs weren't even like numbers. They were just the characters having a dialogue, but mm-hmm. singing the dialogue. That's to a lot faint of Broadway. music. Yeah. Um, a lot of plays are like that, and I yeah. don't enjoy them that unless they're super witty and mm-hmm. charismatic or something. But if it's just factual, like descriptive, it's not very interesting. Yeah, rather to just have a scene, a like normal scene, yeah. with dialogue. Yeah, and then maybe after the scene or leading out of the scene, just yeah. go into a musical number and do your th- yeah. four or five minute musical number and then go into like a scene with dialogue and stuff. Yeah. That's um, when we did little shop of horrors, I actually did that in high school and it was a ton of fun. And I like that play is great. Yeah, and that movie really is great good. because that's how it kind of is. It's, it's dialogue or a scene between the characters and right. then they either go into like a duet or one of them leaves and the other one sings. A song. Yeah. But it was, it was structured in, in that sense that it was like a normal, like almost movie scene and then a musical number and all the songs are fucking super catchy. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wish that it, it would have, it would have just done more normal dialogue with numbers. But I mean, if it, that's yeah. probably just not how it was written, but I don't know. There's probably a ton of people who would be like, Oh, you just don't get it. Like, you, like I said, I don't really care for musicals that much. So I, it's probably, um, yeah, ruining my appreciation for a little bit, but it's okay. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people liked it, so I'm definitely probably in the minority of people who didn't really care for it too much. Vanessa loved it, so oh okay. Um, I feel I feel like if you like musicals and you like fairy tales, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, right on. Well, maybe one one day I'll end up checking it out. I don't. I like musicals, but I I'm not a huge fairy tale fan. Yeah. I think that they are um, uh, fraught with bad ethical statements and yeah and, they're just and, from a different time yeah there were it, different standards and just i don't know yeah there's but they did there. um i will say that i um i it was very clever how they were able to intermingle all the different fairy tales sure. like how they met it was it was well yeah. done like the, the the plot and the story was interesting it just wasn't that the delivery just wasn't very good i didn't think there's a show I used to watch on TV that does the same thing, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, where they, uh, it's all this kind of fairy tale, and they're all mixed together, but they live these lives, and they don't know that they're fairy tale characters until later. You know what I'm talking about? It's Is it a, that Once Upon a Time. Once show? Upon a Time. Yeah. yeah, I watched the shit out of that um, uh, for a long time, and it's it was it was surprisingly good. I was really surprised at how they kind of brought some realism to it with all the supernatural kind of. Um, uh, fairy tale 
abilities and all this stuff. And, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that for a long time, but it wasn't, uh, it was a little bit more, um, serious than, uh, a lot of fairy tale stuff, which I enjoyed. It was yeah. kind of like, I don't know, pretty campy, but, but fun, a really good, great acting. in uh, once upon a time though, like that really made it work. Um, anyway, uh, before we get done, I was going to ask you if you have any new year's resolutions or we got the new year coming up, uh, tonight oh, yeah. at midnight. Yep. And, we are reigning uh, the new year. This will post after new year's, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. what are you going to do in the next year? To, um, uh, I used to, so I used to really be into new year's resolutions growing up. Cause I think it was like my whole family was always like, Oh, what's your resolution? And then I've realized that I hate the idea of resolutions because it's, it's almost it seems like an obligatory statement that you're making about how you're going to change your life or something. Um, but I feel like when when I'm leading into a new year, I just like I I want to look at the next year ahead of me, and it's almost like setting goals instead. Of, I, I feel like a resolution is life altering. Mm-hmm. You're doing something to alter your life for the better or right. whatever. But I, I I'd rather just like set goals. Just be like this year I want to accomplish these couple of things and if I can, cool. Which I mean like for this year I really want to finish um the novel I'm working on. I'm about a th- almost a third of the way actually done writing it. Um so I, I should be able to get that done in the next year, which would be awesome. And then I want to, depending on when I can get that done, I'd like to get another maybe collection of short stories written too. Um, so as far as like writing goes, if I can, you know, I I want to finish uh, at least one project this year. Um, and then I don't just like continuing, I guess, to maintain um, exercising. And then I'm still like progressively attempting to eat better. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Staying alive, I guess, <laughs> but I don't. I don't have like a uh, an omega resolution that I'm sure. just like oh, I'm gonna lose fifty pounds and run a marathon or something. Yeah, well, you've already lost a lot of weight and done a lot of work, and yeah. it doesn't take. Uh, I think the problem is people think that because the year changes that they're going to change. Yeah, exactly. And that has nothing to do with it. It has to do with your willpower, your motivation, your. Um, you're being able to not, you know, be to be honest with yourself. And part of that is being like, well, I'm weak and have not changed the things that I think need to change. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to change, it's got to be a major uh, shift in my thinking, not my activities necessarily right away. You have to you have to think about things and why you want to do them before you're going to actually change them. And it's always weird, too. I, I wonder, always wonder when people are like, Oh, this this year I'm going to do this. It's like, well, why don't you just start now? Like, why? Yeah, why do people exactly. feel this weird yeah. need to procrastinate? Like, this is my last cigarette. Oh, this I'm is my gonna, last yeah. drink. It's like bullshit. Oh, it's You're just Saturday. fucking lying. I'm gonna on Monday. Monday it's the start of a yeah. new work week. Yeah. I'm gonna start working out. Mm-hmm. But the next two days I'm just gonna be a piece yeah. of shit. But it's just like because I used to kind of do that same thing where I'm just like, oh, you know, I want to start working out. Or I want to start a new project, like yeah. writing project or something. Well, I'll start it on this day. I'll make a plan to start it then. Mm-hmm. And then that day comes and you're like. No, I'm, I got just, I'm kind of tired. It's a busy week. I'll yeah. wait till next week. And eventually you're just constantly putting it off. And so I finally came to terms with if I'm going to start doing something, I don't care what day of the week it is. I'm just going to start doing it and then yeah. I'll just integrate it in. Um, but I think that people do that with New Year's resolutions. They're like, mm-hmm. um, oh, maybe they start thinking about it a few days in advance and like, well, when the new year starts, I'm going to start doing this. Right. It's like, well, just start doing it now. Like, what's stopping you yeah. other than yourself? Or m- make the plan now. Like, mm-hmm. say, these are the things that I need to do. These are the things I need to look up. I need to read this. I need to figure this out. Talk to these people and work progressively toward your goals yeah. with plans because <laughs> that's mm-hmm. how you get shit done in life. You don't just go, okay, I'm going to stop doing this behavior because you've never been able to do that or you would have done it. Mm-hmm. You, you can't just stop something because you think that you can in the future. You yeah. have to actually look up how to stop it or how to start it or what to do or why. And then if you don't have any motivation to continue it or there's no real reason, you just think that society wants you to be a certain way, then you're not going to continue or have any reason to yeah. stay doing it. I think it takes a major uh, shift in uh, your self-perception to actually make major changes and it's another one of those societal things where we all, you know, people want to have something to talk about and something to make them feel good. And they don't get that. It's hard work. It's not it's not about other people as well. Like your New Year's resolution, you shouldn't be 
blabbing about your news, your New Year's resolution. Just fucking do it. You yeah. Know? Just make changes and take it seriously and stop fucking distracting yourself with all the things that, you know, have led you to where you are to now you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Or where you feel like you could do something different, but you don't. Do so. you uh, have a resolution or goals or... Um, I haven't really thought about that much other than I am still, you know, just trying to maintain what I started changing, you know, Mm -hmm. seven, eight months ago in May, um, or June or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I've been really getting into the whole fitness, um, uh, exercise thing, like, you know, learning like to take like this day to do this, take a day off from doing that, do this. Mm -hmm. I've been watching this guy on YouTube called Elliot Hulse. And he's this huge fitness buff, and he's very um, uh, he has like a holistic approach to fitness, and it's it's very. Um, I'm learning about like bio bioenge- uh, energetics. Bioenergetics is interesting, and then he talks about like having um, you know like while you want to do things that make you grow as far as like strength conditioning, but you also want to do things that make you grow mentally. and f- And he talks about being the strongest version of yourself, mm-hmm. which is a really cool holistic kind of um, self growth kind of you know personal thing and i'm i'm trying to learn more about what i want to do with that and i'm really trying to not be distracted with tv and video games Mm -hmm. and trying to increase my um skills and knowledge and my health and understanding of these kind of uh principles and and you know just trying to learn about this stuff that i think is interesting right now um, so I'll just continue doing that and this podcast and, and yeah, I was going to say doing I, all this is a big deal and I want to keep doing that. And I, one of the, I think one of the resolutions is just to kind of get a little bit more, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit more backing or maybe do some other podcast ideas or, mm-hmm. or get some more equipment for the podcast, just make it better and, and, uh, have fun with it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that sticking with this and hopefully getting more listeners and, and growing a little bit would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be um, fun. Uh, it'd be fun to get some some feedback and some 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 growth as far as it goes, and mm-hmm. uh, see what people think. See what we think. But my new um, mentality that I've started using recently is: um, I try to envision myself as a person dying, like an old age person. Yeah, and reflecting on my life and and. Um, thinking about what what I was happy with or what like what I was glad that I accomplished or my regrets mm-hmm. that I didn't do. So I um that's I've actually stopped playing video games quite a bit lately because I, I realized that I enjoy them. They're fun. They're great they're a great form of entertainment, but I they don't really add anything to my life in terms of like if I died tomorrow, I would be pissed that I yeah. used to wasted so much time doing it when I could have been doing yeah. um, more things, you know, spending time with my, my wife and my dog more or writing mm-hmm. more or things like that. And so I've just started to try to ease off of doing that. Like I still want to do it. I enjoy doing it, but just not as much and focusing on things that I think are more important sure. um, to me. And yeah. and so it was just like a, it was a weird thought process to think like because like, you always – like see those <laughs> scenes in movies or stories where the old person's like, oh, if I would have only done this more, yeah. da 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 da. So I, I kind of went with that mentality. I was like, if I was an old person yeah. that was a, on my deathbed, like what would I think of my life so far, and what would sure. I be proud of? And I'd rather pursue the things that make me happy and, and prideful. Um, yeah, for sure. Than things the things that I didn't sure. really get that much out of. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's just yeah. A weird thought think, process i've been using as of late in regards that's good to that. yeah because you are gonna die mm-hmm. and yeah. uh you're you know the older you get the harder it's going to be to accomplish the things that you want to do mm-hmm. and the less time you're going to have to make up for anything that you wasted earlier so um yeah i definitely don't want to look back and be like oh i was a fucking worthless yeah you know nobody cares about me i didn't accomplish anything and you know Expressing yourself is important, and I want to be more um, more honest about who I am with more people and try to um, be more genuine and things like that, I think, just in general, because that's yeah. just something that is important to me. Uh, and um, trying to connect with people um, more and trying to... Um, 
change some of my kind of uh, habits, like my uh, need to always be uh, doing something and, and, you know, listening to something and watching something and trying to be a little bit more calm, uh, I think will help me in relationships with anybody yeah just and easing off the gas pedal a little bit yeah and slowing yeah, for down sure. and for sure i feel the same way sometimes where if i'm not if like on my days off i feel like i've got to get all these chores done and i need to i have like an mm. agenda for my day off yeah and i almost never just have a day off where i'm like i'm just you know i'm just gonna chill back and just yeah just you know enjoy myself and maybe just lay on the couch for a little bit or something but yeah yeah i think that it's very easy to get caught up in the bustle of everything and yeah. not slow down at all. Sure. It's, like, and I, it's all about balance, I guess, because you don't yeah, want to be complacent all the time and not getting anything done. But No, and it's easy to be like, well, I'm doing a lot of stuff, but really you're not doing very much. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of progressing through inconsequential activities, and it feels like you're busy. It feels like you're accomplishing things, but you're really not. So, you know, I think even just going on a walk and or meditating or... Um, you know, thinking about something different or doing something new and, and different. Like I was thinking about how I wanted to, I want to like ride a horse. I don't know why, but it's something that I think I want to try. Have you ever ridden a horse before? Well, I've, I, we grew, I grew up with horses. Oh, yeah. I was bucked off horses. I always had a bad relationship with, not bad relationship with them, but like, I always had a negative perception. And now that I'm older, I think that it would be empowering to take that back a little bit mm. and, and ride a horse. And I think it'd be a lot of fun too. I mean, yeah. fucking people love that shit. And I think it'd be interesting. And then, you know, like maybe do something just different, like go on a trip or something like mm-hmm. that. That's more my own choice. Cause I've gone on a lot of trips, but it was always with other people for without my, like I didn't choose to yeah. do it. Like I did, but I wasn't like, I didn't have to go, but it wasn't like I planned it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know, just, uh, just, you know, do some new shit and live life and not be super, uh, stuck in the fucking patterns and yeah. stuff like that. Po so show. Yeah. Cool. 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 Indeed. That was weird. Well, was unison. At cool. The same there. at the fucking time at the same <laughs> time. Right on. Well, this is fun and, uh, we, uh, appreciate all the listeners and, um, like, subscribe, share, or don't. I mean, you don't have Complain, to do anything. Complain, whine, yeah. comment, praise. Um, you know. Happy New Year from a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, it'll be a few <laughs> days ago. Uh, I hope uh, everybody, you know, takes life by the uh, by the horns and wrestles it to the ground. And if it takes till you die, then at least you fucking accomplish something, I guess. Yeah. People would be like, hey, that guy wrestled the fucking bowl to the ground. He he died, yeah. but he did it. It was really entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. Well, good night. And good and luck. Good luck.